I finally remember one such visit that I made last June. It was to a campus in New York City, my home, and this campus was just about 11 miles as the crow flies from my apartment on the Upper West Side. But until I went there, I had no idea it even existed. One of its faculty members, an English professor, picked me up on my street corner. We drove up the West Side Highway into the Riverdale section of the Bronx, which, if you're not familiar with it, is gorgeous with lush land that rises steeply from the banks of the Hudson River. We took a left turn toward the river. We went through a set of gates, more or less, and there before me, utterly new to me, was one of the most gorgeous settings I've ever seen, 70 acres of brilliantly green fields, towering trees, and fancifully de detailed buildings overlooking and edging up to the water and facing across the water the majestic stone palisades of New Jersey. Some of you may recognize the school by that description. It's the College of Mount St. Vincent. It's among CIC's 600 plus members. It was founded in 1847 by a religious order for women, the Sisters of Charity, many of whom still work there. Uh, I met several during my short visit, which by coincidence was on a day when I published a column chastising the Catholic Church for its marginalization of women and questioning Pope Francis's description of himself as a feminist. I kind of held my breath as the sisters approached me. I reflexively flinched. Um, I needn't have to a person, they said, good for you, and they didn't even do that in a whisper. <laughs> Although beautiful, the College of Mount St. Vincent is not a fancy place. Its acceptance rate is over 80%. More than 85% of its students receive financial aid. Many of those students are on Pell Grants. It doesn't have big time sports teams. Its facilities are modest, scaled to an undergraduate population of under 1,700 students, fewer than half of whom live on campus. But there was something special there, a sense of community, a web of close-knit relationships. As the professor who'd driven me there showed me around, we kept running into students she knew. And she really knew them, telling me what courses they were taking, what internships they had, what careers they wanted. She introduced me in particular to two students who had taken several classes with her and had impressed her mightily. And it was clear that she'd made the decision, the vow, if you will, to do whatever she could to guide them into the professional lives that they craved. It was equally clear that they were thriving because of that investment and because of her confidence in them. Enough students showed up for my remarks that we didn't have enough seats. When the question and answer session came, hands immediately went up, and I couldn't get to all of them. And what these students asked and observed was as smart as what students anywhere have asked and observed. These students were thoughtful, hopeful, and above all, they were engaged. I was struck by that. And as I listened to them and learned more about them, I was even more struck by something else. They might not be experiencing this particular engagement at any other school. They might not be getting a college education, but for this school. Many were New Yorkers who needed a local institution without the tariffs and barriers of entry that Columbia or NYU, or for that matter, Fordham has. Or many were from elsewhere, but needed a school in a city with the sorts of employment opportunities and internships that were necessary in order for college to make sense for them financially and practically. And many of them, no matter where they were from, needed the direct access to faculty, the small class sizes, the sense of intimacy that a college of Mount St. Vincent scale pretty much guarantees. Its particularities, its quirks, and its charms suited them, worked for them, and might just be creating the brightest future possible for them. I was asked to talk today about the vital role of independent colleges. And their most important role, I think, is illustrated by a school like Mount St. Vincent, to enrich the higher education landscape with such a diverse garden of options that any and every student can find the flower he or she needs. That can't happen if he or she has only large schools of 5,000, 25,000, or 50,000 students to choose from. That can't happen if he or she has only public universities to consider. That can happen only when the landscape teems with the possibilities, surprises, and secrets, like Mount St. Vincent, where the motto I spotted on the website couldn't have been more apt. It said, all dreams welcome. There are many kinds of dreams and just as many kinds of dreamers. And there must be many kinds of schools to accommodate and nurture them. Those schools can't be cut from the same cloth or stitched into the same pattern because students aren't the same and they don't learn in the same ways. In higher education as in apparel, one size doesn't fit all and one style doesn't flatter all.